it's the next day. Yesterday evening I gave the lower part of the base another coat of stain. Let it set overnight. This morning I buffed it down and gave it a coat of deft. Actually gave it a couple coats of deft to get a nice smooth surface on it. On the little insert here, uh, it was dry this morning. I gave it another coat of deft when I sprayed this one here. So it's ready to go. It's nice and smooth. I've pre-drilled it to uh, match our holes in the base here so we don't have to worry about splitting here. I'm going to use a couple of one inch screws to hold that in place. I've lined up my horseshoe and sunk a couple hole, or nails in the holes. I did that before I put my base on there because I wanted to make sure the horseshoe was centered before I uh, pre-drilled the holes in my base so everything would fit nice and perfect. To show you how I put the nails in, remember we drilled our holes, pre-drilled our holes. Well, these are much too long. So what I did was I cut them off. As you can see, I cut them just about in half and cut them at a slant. See that slant? So just take a pair of uh, snips and snip them off at an angle there. And place them in the hole with the tack hammer. Just kind of nail them in place. Just like shoeing a horse. Get that out of the way. Make sure they're all seated pretty good. That looks good. Put our insert in there, flip her over, drop our screws in. Grab a screwdriver. And there we have our base all finished. As a last step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and give it a real light coat of depth. Not a heavy coat, just a light coat because I especially want to cover the tops of these nail heads because that's raw steel and it will tarnish over time, but that depth will keep that from happening. Alright, so that completes that base. Okay, so let's set that aside. And the next step here is our boots. Cutting out our boot blank. Here's the pattern I used. It's four and a half inches tall. I'm using a piece of basswood. Let me get my measure out here. Which is, let's see here, it's about four and a quarter inches wide. Alright, so you need a piece four and a half inches tall approximately and one and a quarter inches wide and you can see how I laid out the boots save waste and I'll take that over to the bandsaw and cut it out but I'm not going to take you over to the bandsaw because you've seen me cut out things before and there's no sense of your putting up with that noise so anyway, the next time you see these, they'll be cut out. Okay, we have our uh, blanks cut out here, as you can see. Uh, I went ahead and cut out the area in between the two uh, side pull-ups for the boots. And I've indicated in here where to drill a hole. I've gone ahead and drilled a hole on this one. I used a Forstner bit and uh, if you hang on here just a minute I'll show you the little rig that I designed because I carve lots of boots to uh, 
make sure I get that hole straight, straight down in there and have it held securely as I do it. Okay? I just made this out of the out of some scrap around the shop, just a piece of three quarter inch plywood and some old three quarter inch uh, MDF. And what happens is the boot just goes right in there. This sits on the drill press, and this way you're you can hold that real steady and not worry about injuring yourself as you're drilling a nice deep hole. So I'll show you how I do that over at the drill press. Okay, here we are over at the drill press. I've got the thing positioned right where I want it. So, I'm going to drill that hole straight down and stop about right there. This is a one half inch Forstner bit. Forstner bits are nice because they drill a nice flat hole on the bottom. So here we go. clean looking hole. Now when we carve the boot we'll be able to get our knife in there and ream that out, kind of flare it out towards the top of the boot and it'll look real nice. But you can see how little jigs like this can really help you out around the shop when you're doing things. They really make it safe which is better than trying to hold this thing with your hand and drill with a hand drill. Uh, you can end up hurting yourself that way and I'm too old to get hurt. So anyway, that gets our blank already and the next step is we're going to start carving these two boots. Let's stop for a minute and just review what we've done so far. Now first off you're going to need a glove and a good thumb protector. I use that uh, carver's tape because it really gets on your thumb and locks on there. It doesn't flop around. That's important because you don't want something loose and floppy when you're sitting there moving that knife around you want something snug and secure. That tape, I don't trust it. It just doesn't work. I've cut right through it but this rubberized uh, carver's tape, it's the best as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to use a couple of knives. You know the name of that one. And uh, this is just a good knife a real good friend of mine made me. It's excellent for doing the things that uh, the other one won't do. Those are really about the only tools you're going to need. Now in the earlier videos I told you that I coated my base down here first with a mixture of shellac, thin down mixture of shellac and alcohol to seal the top of the wood. This is the shellac I use. It's just a amber shellac. You can get it down to home store. And you'll need a can of denatured alcohol to mix with it. Just mix it about five to one, six to one. It really doesn't matter so much is you just want to seal the top of this so it doesn't give you that blotchy appearance. I mentioned that uh, I made an area for the nameplate up on the front of the base. This is the nameplate here and we used a router bit that closely approximated half of the edge of the nameplate that frames it real nicely. As you can see it really looks spiffy up there and uh, if you want to order these name plates, here's where you get them. I buy them out of a place in Wichita Falls, Texas. Been buying them there for years. Got run off the paper there. It's uh, www.signsbygwynn.com and you just go on the net, you fill out the form, pick your, uh, pick your name and designate the plate. I think this is an A30. I use a double line block type style on the top and the script on the bottom and they look real good. They go and they blacken those letters, they drill the holes for you. You have your choice of silver or gold plate. I always go with the gold. Looks classier. 
Okay? So that's where you get that stuff. So, first thing on your boots. When you draw on a boot, you want to begin with the sole. Just like building a house, you begin with the foundation. On the bottom of the hood, it hood. Bottom of the foot is the foundation. So as you're drawing these, you want to make sure that you got a right and a left hand. Not a left hand, right and a left foot, okay? So anyway, get your pen that doesn't write too well and draw the uh, shape of the foot on there and do the same on the other one. You can see I've kind of moved this heel into the center here. We'll do the same thing over here, except in reverse. We'll move that heel towards the center there. Out on the side. In for the arch. And back to the top, like that. All right? And then we'll stop. Pick a shoe you want to start with. And then we'll start carving.